NBA 2K surprised just about everybody this morning by releasing news about my team, Park, both current gen and next gen, my NBA, the W, you name it. There's a lot to talk about and there's some rumors spurring, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get straight into it. But before we do, if y'all new to the channel, man, be sure to subscribe. Hey, we dropped these videos, man. Y'all been showing a lot of love the past three, four videos. I appreciate it. Y'all wanna be in tune, man. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notice. I upload these. All right, man, let's get into it. <clears throat> now I wanna highlight all the main bits of news. News, first of all, because I know you don't want to read entire blog posts. There was multiple articles that dropped, each revealing different pieces of information. And there was even some quotes from some developers that might actually interest and catch your attention, fellas. And there was actually some quotes from some developers that caught me off guard as well. All right, first thing is the NBA courtside report, which is where they reveal their news nowadays. They used to do it on Facebook. This is a better update, in my opinion. Estimated read time. <laughs> they know people's not reading this. All right, let's skim past the bullshit. Off the rip, they begin talking about changes to the gameplay. They didn't get specific here, they were pretty vague, but the one key point they mentioned says this. Breaking down defenders off the dribble with new signature moves and combos. Usually 2K very much dislikes when people combine different dribble moves to get boosts and speed boosts, what you call it. So I'm curious to see if this is their embrace of dribbling. It's no secret that 2K21 Next Gen had some horrible dribbling. Like you, you had to be pretty brain dead to not be able to just string together some moves and move in a direction. But there was no skills gap to it. So I'm hoping this means that 2K adopts a new attitude when it comes to just the way that they approach dribble moves and stop removing effective dribble moves, add more effective dribble moves in the game. Precision jump shooting, dunk in traffic, and pulling alley-oops have all become more skill-based. I'll tell you this, 2K says this almost every single year. Something becomes more skill-based every single year. Yo! Hey man. Hey man, we're talking about 2K. You read the news? What is, what is going on? What do you got going on? All right, man. Well, first of all, now take this in. They said breaking de down defenders off the dribble with new signature moves and combos. What is, that sounds like a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> becomes more skill based. My problem is that I don't think they know what that means, though. At all. At all. No clue. Because in my opinion, the most skill based one was like 16 and 17. But remember, they, they said it was like super skill based in 18, and you just run to somebody, you pull back, mm -hmm. <laughs> snatch back. So mm -hmm. I just don't think they know what they're talking about. Interesting. Why are you wet? You don't get wet sometimes? I'll catch you soon. I'm 2K has literally never in the past said they were gonna make something more skill-based and actually pulled through on it. But, I mean, if you wanna be hopeful, you can be hopeful. I don't think this is gonna happen, personally. Let's see, though. At least they made an attempt. They know which direction the community wants to go in. Uh, on the defensive side, it was a whole bunch of gibberish. No point in reading through that. But then things become a little interesting because they're introducing a new concept to, to the most popular modes in the game called Seasons, and this is what they say about it. Free for all 2K22 gamers in my team, my career, and the W on the PS5 and Xbox Series XS. It brings more content, more awards, and more ways to play, which sounds like nothing, right? So Power puts out a tweet saying seasons will happen every six weeks or so, and they say, another interesting development is the addition of seasons to all facets of 2K22. This concept will apply to the entirety of the game. Visual Concepts is promising significant updates on similar six week time frames, including a holiday update that will add an undisclosed mode to my team. So that's all they said about it. And keep in mind, for a while, I was asking 2K to explore the option of instead of releasing a game every single year, have we? why don't we just try a seasonal type thing where every season, a new map, some new dribble moves, just add a whole bunch of new stuff. It's a very popular method of releasing content in video games. Most of the video games that I play release content in seasons. So why don't you just try it and see how it goes? Here they're promising is gonna be free one and there's gonna be content too. So I'm curious to see how it goes. And then they jump into my team where the highlight new mode they're talking about is a my team draft. Something that has been long requested return to NBA 2K22. You basically draft your team guys it's pretty straightforward depending on how they implement this right here i feel like it could be a banger of an idea shout out to jesser in 2k15 who doing them packing plays and the drafting my team hey listen all i'm saying is the community has put 2k on game i'm getting more into that a little later uh, they talk a little bit about the evolution of my team they also mentioned that everything you do on current gen will transfer over to next gen so the progress is cross gen this is the only mode that that applies for because that doesn't apply for the city and my career, et cetera, et cetera. And then we get into the 
juicy bits. I did leg day yesterday. That hurts. Okay, so 2K is doing something completely separate for current gen and next gen. Remember, the original 2K team that y'all been playing the games of for decades is working on next gen. The team that 2K acquired called Hookbang that they renamed Visual Concept Self, they're working on current gen. It's two different dev teams. I saw some people freaking out about the fact that 2K is gonna split their... I don't know why they weren't more vocal about it because they knew people were gonna have concerns, but it's completely separate teams working on these two separate games right now. So on the current gen version of the game, hold on. Listen to this. On the PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, which by the way means that Switch and PC will not have next-gen features, NBA 2K gamers will show out and compete in an all-new dedicated basketball community, a neighborhood built on the spacious decks of a sailing cruise ship. Now, hold on! I fully remember doing a challenge on this channel where I asked designers to come up with concepts for NBA 2K22, my, my courts and parks and neighborhoods, right? Wasn't it toasted on this year's challenge who came up with this exact idea? That's pretty impressive. I think it was Toasted. Somebody did it, somebody did it. So shout out to the designers in the community, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all be putting 2K on game, for real. So everything that happens in the neighborhood on current gen is gonna happen on like a ship, like a yacht, like a cruise ship. But on the next gen version of things, they're promising an all new city. Now remember, they said the city was gonna come back, but hopefully we're, we're gonna see some significant changes to it because as 2K, for some reason, admitted themselves, the 2K K21 city was dead. Bonish acknowledged that the environment was dead in many ways. This time around, the city will be populated with non-player characters and a quest system to make it feel like it's teeming with life, activity, and interactivity, he said. <laughs> It's always funny how like when a game is launching, they gas it up, but like a year later, they're like, yeah, that last shit was ass. But this next one though, this next one's gonna be great. <laughs> An all new quest system for 2K22 engages my players with creative content while offering new ways to level up and earn rewards in this re-envisioning of the PS5 and Xbox One basketball community. There was a lot of hype jargon in there, but I am curious what they mean by quest systems. Hopefully it's not like that NPC stuff they had in 2K21 next gen, because while the first couple times <laughs> it might've been like, oh, okay, I can, I can do this. It wasn't nearly rewarding enough. It didn't feel like a real RPG experiment to bump into an NPC, complete a reward, and get something of value in return. Now, this is something I've been asking for for a very long time, and I don't know how 2K plans on implementing it, but if done correctly, it's gonna get my dig hard. I'm being honest with you. My players can enter select matchmaking buildings to be placed into immediate competition. Matchmaking sessions will be available for a number of game types and will contribute to a my player's progress. Fellas, I've been saying for a while, it's hard to get games from time to time, especially when you hop in by yourself. We know this. 2K, it would be nice if there was just a matchmaking option. And we know the technology exists because they do it in events like Ruffles. 2K, please implement this correctly because if you do, you would have just saved people a lot of time that don't want to stand around on spots begging and pleading for the 6 60 overall down the road to just hop on so they could play a game. They did continue to promise some more news early in September. And keep in mind, this is pretty unprecedented for 2K to even talk about the city this early. Usually the city is the, the final thing that they talk about. It's the city, the park, the neighborhood, whatever you wanna call it. So I was actually kind of blown away that they did come out with this information, but it's just vague information to get you hyped. Hopefully we get some details soon. Now, I'm actually a little curious about what they mean because they were vague in this report, but we're about to talk about my career and we might actually be seeing some significant changes to the way that 2K is approaching my career because for the past 11 years 2k comes out with the story mode and in the past they got people like spike lee to direct the story mode and they put a lot of effort and resources into it but they might not be going in that direction because read this embark on your personal journey to the pros a sprawling my career life by exploring the city seeing new and familiar faces hooping your way to new exciting heights okay now keep that in mind now this is an article from Brian Mazik, who I used to write for Forbes, but I guess now writes for this website. Perhaps the biggest piece of information in the entire info dump relates to the changes made to my career. It appears there will not be an elaborate cinematic story component to the my career journey this year. Instead, players will be turned loose to level up their my player in their own way within the city. There's a new quest system he alludes to, and there'll be NPCs for you to level up. So 2K might be double quadrupling down on RPG, which is an interesting take because Although that does get me excited because it's something new, I've never seen 2K nail RPG. I've played games like Assassin's Creed Origin that just had me hooked. I, all I wanted to do was side missions and side missions, boom, main missions. You know what I'm saying? And some games could really pull it off. Ubisoft bodied it with that game, in my opinion. I've never felt that way about 2K and its RPG elements. 
if they do pull it off correctly i feel like it would add a ton to the game and, I, and i've been saying for a while like it takes so much resources to make a my career story i personally don't be playing my career so i could do without it i know a lot of people do do my career it's very possible that they just looked at the number of people actually participating in the my career story watching the cutscenes, diving deeper into the experience and they thought maybe like let's try a new direction let's see how this goes and i'm assuming this is for next gen they might have like a generic story that they usually do for current gen we don't know and then they talk about something called hidden talents players can now pursue side ventures to build a profile in lucrative and trendy spaces brush up against the fashion world where the art of promotion will drive up your success as a mogul or get involved in the hip-hop business where your music talent opens up an intriguing lane in the industry well this would get me excited if i wasn't a veteran in this I feel like this feature right here is going to be so bare bones that after doing it a couple times, I won't be interested. That's just my prediction. But 2K is going deeper into this more RPG element, so we'll see how deep they can make this here hidden talent experience. I think it's going to be surface level. I refuse to get excited about it. So we know in 2K21 Next Gen, they just completely murked the My Core. And I've been saying for a while, the My Core was horrible, but all you need to do is reinvent it. Give more space so the court feels full like a Pro-Am Core. Push the cameras back. The cameras were stuffed right there and allow us to just have it be a private park experience like you have the public experience at the park you can match make now if you want to but on the my core you invite your friends you don't have infinite issues getting them into your micro because the elevator's broken and now 2k has this little bit said no place like home where they say this moving up in the professional world means expanding your home lifestyle central to your my career narrative and progress your personal hub represents your place in the journey to the nba as your profile and ambitions level up so too will your home base which alludes to the fact that just like in 2k 16 in other 2ks you get new microns depending on like where you are and what you unlock you can get better and better places you know, I remember that penthouse they had I think it was like in 2k 16 where did that go what happened to that and my court has always been a dope idea it's just never in 2k's history been executed correctly I swear to god bro it might take one developer one week to fix all the problems in the my court that's it and it just has never been fixed they promised with my career again right here to uh give us more information in September so my career in city news again is gonna be last on the docket again a little surprise they came out with my career info this early they usually don't do that and then they gave some a, a bunch of vague information about my NBA, my WNBA. If you were a my NBA or, or dub my WNBA fan, I would be livid right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. It looks like once again that game mode has been overlooked. <laughs> So there was other tidbits of information that's relevant to the gameplay that was addressed in some other articles. Let's get into those. Now it says, per Mike Wang, the team has addressed stamina with the system that now taxes player stamina more based on high effort dribble moves, contact dunks, etc. That is tragic for the dribblers in the community, but also they have said this right here years ago, multiple times. So I actually don't believe it's gonna happen, nor do I actually think it would add anything to the game. Again, a couple years ago, I introduced a fantastic idea. 2K, please listen. If someone goes for a steal, it should take like two fifths of their stamina bar so they can't spam steals. So it makes stealing effective, but let there be a penalty when people steal. I, I don't feel like that should also be the case for dribbler. If I'm a point guard and I'm a 99 overall and I bust a dribble move, and now I'm tired. It's like, damn, bro, I was like five dribble moves. I'm supposed to be an NBA player. Contact dunks, I can see. I can see why contact dunks might reduce stamina. I feel like there's better ways to attack stamina than to attack dribblers. I already feel like dribblers get punished every single year. The dribbling just keeps getting worse and worse. I wouldn't go in that direction personally. And it's also been confirmed that Rookieville is no longer going to be in 2K21 next gen. While although it was a valiant effort, 2K was looking for a place where people can play where they wouldn't get absolutely pummeled by tryhards so you play your first few games in rookieville man did it make the prospect of making a new account miserable to play in rookieville is one of the worst experiences 2k has ever put together and i don't even think the rookies enjoyed it ladies and gentlemen it that needs to be like something optional that like rookies can choose to be a part of but it's now out the game rookieville's not gonna be in there on the my nba my WNBA side the only bit of information we learned was that there's a heavy emphasis on scouting and team management that literally means nothing, guys. <laughs> that means nothing. Also, this is the first time I'm seeing them. I must be late to the party, but there's some new screenshots of some of the cover athletes. Boom, that's fire. Let's zoom into this right here. Fire, fire, fire. 2K is a graphically impressive game. We all know that. I don't think nobody ever looks at 2K graphics and goes, they're horrible. That literally never comes out of people's mouths. How much better they can get, who knows? 
<laughs> Who knows, guys? So just to kind of give you guys an idea of what usually happens. Now, keep in mind, sometimes 2K deviates. Usually they come out with the My NBA, maybe the W News first. Then they're going to dive into a little bit of My Team details. More than what we got here. This is just vague entry-level stuff, right? So more My Team details now. No, I'm wrong. They usually start with gameplay first. And then they get into My, my NBA, right? Then they get into My Team, right? Then they get into the My Career and the City, right? If you watched my last video, you know I was talking about how I'm under the impression, just based off trajectory, that 2K21 between current gen and next gen was the best selling year for 2K. Not only did the prices go up, but the units sold is the same as last year. So 2K is making more money than they know what to do with. They just purchased a new dev team. They're launching like two totally completely different games. If y'all remember, when we moved on to the PS4 and Xbox One, the, the current gen version of the game was dog. It was just 2K13 over and over and over again. They never bothered to ever make improvements to it. And the only people that bought it is moms that didn't know better, walked into GameStop and left with the wrong game. They never sold well. It was like a half ass effort that made them some money. That was it. This is the first time in the history of what might be video games, y'all, that I could think of in my head right now where a dev team is dropping two separate games at the same exact time and separate in pretty significant ways so we're gonna see how this is gonna turn up hey in the comments y'all want me to go next gen or current gen off the rip i'm thinking next gen personally as boring as 2k21 was on next gen i have hope that the 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 ceiling is just higher on next gen so if they know what they're doing down there at the visual concept studios they're gonna make some significant improvements to their game bro but we'll see what i refuse to do is get excited because I, I used to get in the trap of doing that. I don't do it anymore, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we just wait for gameplay to see what's next, man. Um, hopefully 2K can drop some gameplay to, to kind of break down and show us what's really changed, you feel me? Hey, I want to see the dribbling, and I want to see the contact animations, and I want to see if there's less clipping. I want to see all of that. Hey, if y'all enjoyed, man, y'all f***ing with the channel, first of all, subscribe. You might never see me again if you don't subscribe. Man, why would you want that to happen? <laughs> hey, there's a video on the screen right now updating y'all on some news that dropped a few days ago. If you caught that, then I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.